Like always on this channel, this is the video where I talk about the year gone by from this channel's perspective. I'll tell you what I think about specific YouTube and, you know, channel related things that normally don't get discussed in videos. I'll answer your questions you sent me and I'll talk about some games or videos I really enjoyed playing and making. In fact, some things I wanted to discuss is something people asked about me anyway, so that's very convenient. Not to start off on a bad note, but, but I will. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I feel 2021 wasn't really a great year for the channel. I think there's been some good videos here and there. Actually, there's been um, a lot of good videos, but I don't really, or rather, I didn't really release as many as I hoped. There were ideas I didn't do the year before that I didn't do in 2021 either. And also videos that took me a short while to make in the past for some reason took me longer on average. And I guess all I can really say to that is that it's my fault. In 2021, I only released, I think, 31 videos, if I counted that correctly, versus the year before, which was 49. In fact, if you go back every year, it's more and more videos per year. I think about 2017 or 18, I released like 91 videos, which is, I can't even fathom that. I know it's not about quantity, but I managed to make videos I was happy with at greater output, so it's just a bit disappointing to see this downward trend over the years. There's been instances where I had a great idea, or so I thought, until I realized that I already made a video about the subject a year or two ago. So that didn't help, especially when I already started writing a script. And then I thought, hey, that seems familiar. And then I realized I already wrote similar sentences in the past, and it's like, oh yeah, there's been a video there. It's even more embarrassing if it was a popular video. It's like 200,000 views, and then it's like me totally forgetting about that and then trying to basically just write a different version of the same video, but yeah. I guess in the end, my aim this year will be to be more efficient with my work ethic and just get things done. That being said, I'll let you know about some of my favorite videos of the year. The etchy and fanservice tier list was actually pretty good. It even managed to get over 100,000 views. It recently got flagged by YouTube and they gave it a, in like an 18 plus rating. At first, when the video was uploaded but not yet made public, YouTube said, hey, it's not suitable for all advertisers. I appealed and they said, oh, okay, it's fine. But for some reason now, almost a year later, that got overturned. So yeah, thanks, YouTube. At least I got a lot of views out of it before that happened and uh, most of the income. I also really like the Xbox 360 HD DVD video, which was not really watched that much. Like a lot of this obsolete tech, I think, is a lot of fun to talk about. I used to do a lot of these videos about, you know, why consoles failed or like, I guess, analysis videos. And this year, one of the bigger successes in terms of that kind of uh, category or genre, I guess, is the why are the Nintendo Switch games so expensive video. If you don't know, it's about how used games on the Switch are on average more expensive than used games found on, you know, like PS4, 5, Xbox One and Series X and S. There's various reasons for that, and yeah, uh, I like putting a video like that together for a change again. I also like the reviews. The Mary Skelter video was fun because that's a new genre, or sorry, not genre, but a series that I enjoyed. And of course, there's the various Neptunia games. Reviews are fun to put together, even if they're time consuming sometimes. The Neptunia stuff always does good, but unfortunately, almost every other game series maybe other than Senon Kagura, usually doesn't do well, which is really unfortunate. You know, even with, like, Atelier Ryza 2, like, that review flopped. It's a bit unfortunate to see that happen, but I guess uh, with those videos, it's more like I do it for the fun of it rather than, you know, rather than to earn money, I guess, which is what the channel started out with in the first place, and that's what, that's what you have to be able to do if you want to do YouTube. One thing that was really cool was that I was invited to do a little piece on my favorite Neptunia game on another channel. You may have heard of Ursha Gaming. So she did a video on her top 10 favorite Neptunia games. And at the end, there's a guest segment there with me. I never did something like that before. So that was quite fun. It's also interesting to see how different our opinions were on a lot of the games. But I guess that's the thing with Neptunia. There's so many games now. And the thing that brought perhaps you into the series is often different than what sparked my interest in it, right? Basically how that came by is that uh, we've had contact before about some uh, like some footage about certain games, uh, about Neptunia games specifically, I mean. So when she was working on this video, she's like, hey, 
how about you do a little piece? And I thought that was pretty cool. Speaking of pretty cool, um, this next video I want to just mention briefly wasn't made in 2021. It's actually a bit older. It's the Where to Start Nintendo Switch Guide. And that reached, uh, I think, maybe in October or so. It reached 2 million views, which is way higher than any other video I've ever made. I don't think any other video even reached 1 million in the first place. So to have that go to 2 million is kind of like, yeah, that's impressive. Even if it's kind of out of date now, it still gets views. And I did do like an update video because, I don't know, I didn't like the idea that there was no mention of the OLED switch, for example. And it's like, you know, but that video didn't gather any views, really. Well, I, would, I would, shouldn't say that, but it didn't uh, get as many views as I hoped it would. So hopefully my old guide, uh, you know, is not going to be too bad in terms of not being up to date there because I don't really want to steer people in the wrong direction. But I guess it's mostly still up to date, even though it's missing one important <laughs> hardware revision, I guess you could say. In terms of uh, videos I disliked, I don't think I really have one for 2021. At the very least, there's been something I found maybe perhaps middling or average. Like, you know, if there's nothing really super impressive about the announcement videos, for example. It's just an announcement about how there's this new game that's being released, right? But it's not really, you know, you know, awful or anything. You know, it's at the very least helpful or, you know, on brand at the very least. I guess uh, most of my disappointment would be perhaps in terms of videos that I released would be on how they performed, but I kind of already went over that. It's hard getting consistent views when the content isn't consistent in terms of the topic. But, you know, hey, I like making videos on all kinds of topics and I don't really want to change that. So overall, the, yeah, the growth of the channel has been somewhat slow, but I have a feeling that 100,000 subscribers isn't that unrealistic. By the end of 2022, probably not. But maybe I get lucky and I, it can become a reality. Maybe, you know, another year or two down the road. The thing is, my subscriber count hasn't ever really gone down, so we'll get there eventually as long as I keep going, I suppose. Let's go to the Q&A session now. There's some interesting questions. And uh, like I said, in fact, there's people that asked me about stuff I was going to talk about anyway. So a handy thing that is. Here's a question on Twitter. Have you played fan service games such as Omega Labyrinth, Life, Gun Gun Pixies, and Waifu Uncovered for the Nintendo Switch? Um, well, those three games, no, but I know about all of them. I know that Omega Labyrinth, Life, that's the one that is quite a bit different on the Switch than it is on the PS4, right? And I also know about Gun Gun Pixies. I've, um, I have like the gameplay footage in my head right now. Pretty sure it's got a Neptunia tie-in, if I remember correctly. And then Waifu Uncovered, uh, I've heard of... Do you still have an original Xbox that has uh, not red-ringed yet? Mine unfortunately did. Um, I wasn't aware that the original Xbox can red-ring, but I guess that means the hard drive, you know, took a dump, right? Well, my original Xbox still works the last time I tried it, so fingers crossed. I do have a mod chip that isn't installed, but it does remove the dependency on the paired hard drive. So you might want to look into that, actually, and uh, someday I'll, I guess I'll get into, you know, mounting or soldering that into my, I was going to say PlayStation, Xbox, I mean, uh, you know, which is more important, gameplay or story. Well, I don't know, that kind of depends. You can have an unbelievably great game that has absolutely no story if you look at old arcade games. Then you've got the opposite, which has... You know, let's say a visual novel, which is all about story and absolutely no gameplay. So there's no golden ratio. It is it is up to, you know, your own preferences. And, uh, you know, there's so many other things that influence the enjoyment out of a game that I don't think there's an answer to that. All right, here's another question uh, about, uh, you know, getting burnt out about playing RPG, NEP, and Senran Kagar games. And how I deal with burnout playing those games. I don't I don't get burned out playing them. So, you know, I've got plenty of other things I can do. It's, you know, it's not like a chore. Perhaps if I wasn't uh, doing videos, then perhaps, uh, you know, getting every new NEP game wouldn't be as fun. But because it's a topic I talk about with the videos and, you know, the video making is part of the enjoyment of that franchise, plus some of the other ones, then, you know, yeah, that's helps with you know not being burned out i guess 
Have you played any game in the Atelier Mysterious trilogy? Uh, no, I've only played, when it comes to the Atelier games, the Arlen trilogy, or trilogy quartet, I guess, is what I call it now, because this is four games. And then, of course, uh, Atelier Ryza as well. And I uh, can't remember what that series, sub-series is called specifically, but you know what I mean. Here's a question I found interesting. Do you plan on doing a review of Upper, since that's the only fan service game uh, fan service Takaki game you haven't talked about yet. Uh, I might talk about it. I do know about Uppers. It was delayed horrifically at one point, wasn't it? I think the art is done. It's like a it's like a beat 'em up game, and the art is done by the same person that does KOF, as far as I remember. It's a Vita game, and also a it's on Steam, I think. It does look interesting. I haven't played it, but it is something I'm interested in. So perhaps it's something I can cover. All right, here's a uh, general question, I guess, uh, I suppose. What's your favorite portable system and why? Um, I could be, I, could, I don't know, I guess I could make a sarcastic comment and say the Switch because I can dock it and use it as a as a home console. <laughs> I don't really like portable systems to play, but as a kid, I always remember seeing people with Game Boys and thinking, oh man, I wish I had one of those so I don't have to like, you know, be bored to death on the shopping trip or whatever. So as hardware, I think they're really interesting, even though I don't use them as much. Like, I don't know, the one that makes me the most excited, I suppose, even though, you know, I grew up during the Game Boy era, you know, with Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket and Color, and then GBA. I think the DS is like the most exciting to me. It has some of my most favorite Pokemon games. And uh, yeah, it also does GBA stuff. So it's very versatile. I think the DS Lite looks cool as well in terms of how it's designed. It's one of the most modern looking systems still. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. Uh, will you do a review on how Neptunia games run on Steam Deck? Well, I guess if I get one, I am I might. I'm not sure how I would package such a video. Like, how well do Neptunia games run on Steam Deck? Is like, is that a topic people are gonna be interested in? Or should I expand that to like other niche games too? That's probably what I would do. I think I'd cover more than just Neptunia. What was your favorite and least favorite game you played last year? Well, that's uh, that's an interesting one. If you go by the most enjoyment, it's gonna oh, it's such a mainstream answer. It's almost painful. Uh, I really enjoyed playing. Wait for it, Call of Duty Cold War. It's just uh, I really um, I, well I always liked shooters anyways. But uh, yeah, I play that on the PS Five and. It's, it's just a game where I can kind of like switch off a certain part of my brain, but at the same time I can, it's a game we, that you can get good at by repetition and uh, things like that. So whenever I just wanted to relax, I played that. And so I've played it so much, I think I'm going to say that is probably the favorite, my favorite game of the year. <laughs> Oh, another... Oh, actually, yes, there is actually a uh, obscure game that I really enjoyed, too. It is a visual novel about where you spend a... Uh, you basically spend your after-school time at a club, and it's like a fox girl, and uh, it's just uh, really cute. But at the same time, it's also... There's, like, two versions. There's just one, like, let's say, a family-friendly version where it's all cute. But then, uh, because, you know, your relationship improves with uh, the main character there, there's also the proper version of the game. And it kind of takes you off guard because then it's like, oh, I forgot it's this kind of game. But uh, yeah, I don't know why I just forgot what the name of the game is called. I'll, I'll show you like gameplay footage or whatever overlaid in the name as well. I want to do a video about that game eventually, actually, because uh, I think it's quite unique compared to you know you know what you want to call those games stating sims and all those sort of things there's a element of immersiveness and uh, it's quite cute and you don't need to buy the saucy version to actually enjoy the game because a lot of the enjoyment is just the day-to-day -day stuff so there you go that's quite the spectrum of games isn't it in terms of least favorite game i don't know nothing comes to mind i didn't play anything where you know that made me want to hurl or anything so I didn't play anything that I didn't really like so that's good what's the last Vita game you bought love your voice by the way would totally watch an ASMR oh geez no no SMR I, I think that's 
I'm so not into that. I think it's, ugh, ugh, I don't like it. Anyways, that's never happening. <laughs> but yeah, the last Vita game I bought, that's an excellent question. I'm pretty sure, I don't know which one it is, but it must be a Neptunia game because I was getting them even though I wasn't playing them on the Vita. So yeah, I'm almost 100% sure. Oh no, actually, could be Moreiro Chronicle. I don't know, it's Moreiro Chronicle or a Neptunia game, probably a spinoff. Yeah, one of those two. Do you prefer the English or Japanese voices for the games? I can't stand the English cast, but if anyone loves it, I'd be curious why. Um, I usually have it defaulted to English. For some reason, I just, uh, I thought the voices just naturally fit quite well. I'm usually a person who sets voices to Japanese. I think it's because uh, mainly the performance was quite good by, uh, you know, uh, Neptune's voice actor so I'm like you know what I'll, I'm gonna give this a try because it's uh it sounds very unique and the Japanese voiceovers sound more like you'd expect whereas the English one is unique for compared to usually anything else you hear so that's why I usually leave it though I'm I know the you know the voices of both because the anime when it first came out that was uh Japanese only so I got used to that as well sometimes I switch back and forth but yeah have you seen or heard of the anime Yuro Yuri? It's my new favorite compared to Strike, which is very different. Yuro Yuri, I actually quite like that. I watched the first two seasons when they were running, and um, I didn't get around to the third one for whatever reason. I think the third season was like when I just stopped watching anime a lot, I suppose. Like, uh, it's I don't watch that much anymore. Not because it's like, oh, I don't like it anymore. It's just, I don't know, just, it just happens in life. But if there's any... Uh, show that I want to pick up uh, it would be that because it's familiar and I think it's very funny so yeah I very much enjoy it one of my favorites what do you think the future holds for Senran Kagura and Kandagawa Jet Girls and Valkyrie Drive Beacon to an extent since Kenichiro Takaki is working on a new project for is it Psy Games I never know how to pronounce that but I guess nobody really knows right I mean Kandagawa Jet Girls like what's gonna happen with that that's just gonna stop right that wasn't really successful as a game it wasn't that great as a game i think most of us probably are not going to expect senran kagura to be as good as it was in you know estival versus era certainly the last couple of spin-offs like reflections and also peach ball uh those were much higher in fan service than uh than i think what we will expect with the new seven game senran kagura seven and valkyrie drive bikini is just like it's like kind of go about jet girls isn't it it's those just ended right i don't think there's going to be any more games there i mean the producer's gone senran kagura they're probably going to try and rework as best they can because that's a bit not a cash cow but they get i'm sure a lot of income from that series and i guess uh the next best thing when it comes to fan service games is well we're just gonna have to have a look at what kenichiro takaki's doing at his new company right another multi-parter here what do you think of death uh the death end series honestly i uh i know almost nothing about it but i know it exists do you think more nep games or senran kagura games will make it to the switch perhaps i guess is the answer but it's just not powerful enough like it's like, like they can't even do a, like look with the neptunia game they couldn't even do a proper ps5 game except have the panties reflect off the you know some a puddle of water that's that's about as high as the the game's graphical quality became in the move to next gen there so they're not very good at making switch games really except if it's simple because they just don't have the budget to optimize it properly so i'm gonna go with i don't think so seems unlikely though they probably should push out the rebirth series i mean you know that should be on the switch if they put v2 there when well, why not the rebirth games that makes sense to have it on there uh, if there was a Disgaea 7, what would you want to see? Well, I just started playing Disgaea 6, so I'm not sure. I think I want to get familiar a little bit more with that game. I still don't know how I feel about the move to 3D, so perhaps the move back to 2D would be something I would love to see. Disgaea is the kind of series where I can say more of the same is good for me. Are you buying the NIS Classic releases? Um, not, not planning to at the moment. Are you getting triangle strategy? I don't know what that is, I'll be honest. 
And out of all the Nep girls, why is Nep gear the best by far? Well, I think uh, we all know why. What do you think about modding slash hacking systems to install custom firmware and emulators? I mean, I've shown videos where I do that, so obviously, you know, why why would anybody be against that? What's your thoughts on the melancholy of Hari Suzumiya? Have you watched slash read it? And if so, did you enjoy it? Yes, it was one of the first ones I saw. I saw like the first anime I really set out to watch after my friend showed me like Bleach and Naruto and then, you know, me being horrifically bored with those. I figured, hey, I'm going to look at something that people are complaining about, which at the time, you know, like, what was it, late 2000s, early 2010s, people were complaining about Moe animes. I'm like, yep, I'm going to watch that then because chances are that I'm going to enjoy that. Usually that's how that goes. And then uh, I watched Lucky Star, which, by the way, is great because you learn so much about Japanese daily life, like the details of how just any sort of daily life that you come across. But anyways, because there were so many references to Haru, uh, Haruhi Suzumiya, I was like, well, I'll give it a go. And I did really enjoy it. It's been a long time since I've watched it. Uh, watched is the key word here. I didn't read it. I know it's a light novel originally. I think that's how I first learned about light novels, knowing that it was a light novel in the first place. And back then, it was so unpopular, light novels here in North America. Like, it was only that and Spice and Wolf, I think, that you could buy and basically nothing else. <laughs> now it's a joke to have, uh, you know, these long uh, names uh, that all originate as, as light novels, right? But yeah, I really enjoyed watching it. It was an interesting change in the art style between season one and two. And then I kind of went back again in the movie. I think the movie was really great. And if I remember correctly, that's one of the very first things I watched in 1080p because then back then you could still get versions of, you know, 4x3, 16x9. Some of them were 720p. Some of them were not even sent. They were, not, they were like interlaced because they were like ripped from TV and they were not all progressive. I think the movie was one of the first 1080p things I watched in the anime. I'm like, whoa, it looks so awesome. <laughs> I didn't watch it when it was actually on, though. Like, it was a few years after. So I didn't have to, um, you know, watch two months of Endless 8. <laughs> I did watch all of the episodes. I didn't skip through them, um, but I don't think I could do that now. Back that I was just getting into anime, so it's like I just absorbed everything. I thought it was so interesting that they did that, that I wasn't even mad at them. <laughs> Though people hate it, that that whole time loop thing. But I think it works at the end because then you, you get a feel, even just a slight feel of how, you know, that must have felt like to be able to just have to live through that for so many, you know, however long that was, that time loop. Would you like to see another NEP game with a dark gritty aesthetic like the OG PS3 game? Or do you like that everything is cuter and more lighthearted now? Personally, I miss the darker aesthetics and music of the first game. Um, yeah, well, the first game had a lot of recycled music, didn't it? I think it's from other Compile Heart games. I do like the not a lot of the new music they have. I don't know if you can say that the it has a gritty aesthetic that other games don't have. I'm going to say Super Neptunia RPG matches uh, that kind of feeling of like a darker world. And none of the other games really do that. So, yeah, Super Neptunia RPG is one that did achieve that. And I do like it more. Um, but it's hard to do because, you know, you always need a new world to get that dark and gritty aesthetic, I guess, uh, as you say. Because they've established themselves as, you know, having this more cute and lighthearted approach now. So you can only really have that in, in a spin-off these days. So yeah, I would like to see another one. And I'm sure we will, eventually. Very important question. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kaon? I really like Kaon. I actually, before doing this YouTube channel, I used to do covers of, like on guitar, uh, of anime songs. And I used to make like death metal versions of like uh, opening and intro songs. And I also did covers of Kaon songs. I think my favorite one is the metal version of Nyarko san That was my... Yeah, I think that was my favorite. I deleted that channel and some of the stuff I thought I had backed up, but I didn't. But anyways, that's not the point. Uh, yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. I like the day-to-day -day, uh, approach, you know, slice of life. It's the first really modern slice of life anime, I think. 
Uh, Lucky Star has its own style, and even though I praised it before, I think Kaon is the one that experiments a lot with camera angles, and it just gives off a feeling without using words, and it establishes a mood, and you can kind of like bask in that feeling, you know, whatever, whether it's comforting or perhaps less nice emotions or whatever it may be. So I think it's really great. Uh, as I mentioned, I do play guitar because I did covers and stuff. Um, I'm left-handed, but I play right-handed guitars upside down, and I don't even reverse the strings, so it's basically all right-handed. But I own a left-handed bass because I bought uh, a bass that looks like uh, Mio's uh, Jazz Master. It's a Squire, but I made it look like her Fender, so I put on the Fender decal, and I changed the saddle, uh, the saddles there and the bridge. So instead of having like the, I don't know, the normal ones that came with the Squire model, I put on brass ones that are like knurled or, or they have like a tread on them or th whatever you call it, because that's for some reason what her bass has. The only thing I need to change now is uh, the scratch plate doesn't really look nice and tortoise shelly like it should. So I want to swap that over. But yeah, it's interestingly my only real left-handed instrument. And yeah, I can play it too. It's it's uh, down-tuned to B, just like my guitars. Unless it's a seven string, then it's, you know, another string lower. So that way I can play all my death metal stuff as well as, you know, the root notes for anything in standard tuning. I don't need to do anything too fancy with it because I'm not that great of a game. Uh, you know, it's not really the, the, the point of the bass. I'm more of a guitar player, I guess, so... Also, what are your favorite metal bands? You know what? I just, I really love black metal, the atmospheric stuff. So I like Windier, for example. There's like a lot of death metal I really like too. You know, and I don't really want to go through like the rabbit hole of naming all those things. But, you know, there's just, uh, there's a lot of stuff. You know, all the metal subgenres, like the extreme stuff, that interests me. So like with black metal, you know, you can go into like depressive or suicidal black metal then there's uh you know the crossovers where it becomes more atmospheric uh you know so i guess atmospheric death metal or sorry uh, black metal then there's death metal doom death then there's doom grindcore i really like grindcore that i think that's a lot of fun but yeah i i don't just like only metal though it's uh i like a lot of electronic music too that's what i grew up with in germany so so i like a lot of that stuff you know that uh from the 90s like the trance and then hardcore happy hardcore as well as you know, a lot of that's funny too you know funny doesn't mean you know you make fun of it it's you know it's still a positive thing right so just in case anybody's thinking i'm making fun of a genre i like all kinds of stuff i like all kinds of stuff but it's usually very specific <laughs> and then the last question is do you think the cpus and friends will be in the new neptunia sisters game or Will it focus so much on the candidates that they will be the only playable characters? Well, how sh how sh I guess how should I know, right? Um, the answer is either yes or no, and I don't have any more info than you do. So, you know, if the main characters are not playable, meaning like the main four goddesses, then I don't care that much because if it's focused on the sisters, then I understand that. And there's plenty of games where we have, you know, the regular gang of four, so I don't really mind. Maybe the other characters, though, like Iffy and Kampa, you know, I, I want them there. Maker characters are always hard because of licensing, so I hope they kind of stop doing those, to be honest. I wish they could make them more subtle, so you're like, ah, okay, they represent this company, rather than just being the name of the company, then they don't have to worry about licensing, but that's not the route they went, did they? <laughs> so probably they might have some Maker characters unique to the game, or maybe none, but yeah. If you encamp at least, you know, with the, with the uh, little sisters, that's what I would like to see. So yeah, I guess that's that. Thank you very much for anybody uh, answering, sorry, uh, sending in questions for me to answer. And I guess we'll see what 2022 is like. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.